So today, I get to be on the opposite side of the camera and be able to share some of the stories of just outstanding individuals uh, who have made significant contributions to kind of Western culture. You know, you think about the Buffalo Soldiers, the impact that they made on the military. We don't talk about that enough. Me and you. Yeah. Who are the Buffalo Soldiers? The Buffalo, Buffalo Soldiers. Soldiers were founded after the Civil War. Right. So after the Civil War, all the white soldiers had homes to go to. Mm -hmm. Some of the free blacks had homes to go to. Mm -hmm. But the uh, other black soldiers who were ex-slaves, they didn't have anywhere to go. So the Native Americans had taken over their country back yeah. from the white settlers. Mm -hmm. So they needed military people to go out west to try to protect the white settlers. Arizona is the last home of the Buffalo Soldiers, OK? The 9th and 10th Cav and the 24th and 25th Infantry were stationed at Fort Huachuca. Kind of talk about the relationship between the Buffalo Soldiers and the Black Cowboys. They brought 250,000 slaves to Texas, and that's when the Black Cowboys became cowboys. They always could ride, and they were very good at it. So when they formed the 9th and 10th Cav, those were Black Cowboys that were claimed Buffalo Soldiers. Buffalo soldiers ain't nothing but cowboys. We really were, you know, that's all it was. No doubt. Yeah, but we went military. That's the only difference. How should Buffalo soldiers be remembered? As the greatest fighters this country's ever had, to uh, be discriminated against and still fight, Buffalo soldiers' legacy is awesome. Spending time with people who ride horses every single day of their lives is amazing. Pretty and first. I've never rode a horse. I never thought a horse was capable of holding me, even though it's a much bigger creature. I've just never felt comfortable riding a horse, even though I've been around horses, cattle, all my life. Hey, you did better than what I thought. You did better than what I thought. You did better than what I thought. And now I'm going to connect with a professional writer to find out more about the Black Cowboys. You know, did some research on you, man. You started rodeoing at three, Yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Talk to me about that. I'm a third generation cowboy. Was born and raised and kind of grew up on my, my grandparents' small ranch. I mean, that's where everything started. I went from being three to, you know, starting the junior rodeo stuff and then went on to the youth rodeos, high school rodeo and open rodeos. A lot of times, we never saw a black cowboy. Kind of talk to me about, you know, that stereotype. Well, I mean, the role of the cowboy, it was always about, you know, going out in pastures, wrangling, driving cattle and stuff. They always made it seem like it was always about the white cowboy that did it. When there was more black cowboys, that was actually on the farms. But when you watch, you know, movies and read about books, they're always making it seem like there's nothing but white cowboys out there working. When the black cowboy, they were the, the top hands. With all that that surrounds kind of that conversation around the Buffalo Soldier, the black cowboy, and your lineage, what kind of emotions does that provide for you? I mean, it makes me feel good to know that I can, you know, follow not even in my grandfather's generation, but the Buffalo Soldiers and the black cowboy from generation farther back. I feel like I'm one of those guys that I'm bringing more knowledge to the table with our younger generation now. It's almost hard to recap the day. It's been fun. Oh, there we go, baby! I think more than anything, just the whole learning process that's taking place today, learning about the distinctions between a Buffalo soldier and a black cowboy, and how they played a role, and how the West started to mature. It was absolutely spectacular and absolutely special.